It looks a little weird science, but the headpiece that Susan Micklejohn dons daily is giving her head peace. Observe the breath deep down. Peace and relief from the deep, debilitating depression from which she suffered most of her life. I had a very, very stressful, overwhelmingly stressful childhood. I had a violent father. And at 11 was the first time I had suicidal ideation. How old are you now? 68. So I've never gotten past the ideation phase. I've never attempted suicide, but I certainly have been enmeshed in that, you know, ideation. Micklejohn, an artist and retired college professor, is one of nearly three million adults in America suffering from depression that does not respond to medication. But one of a very small group, just several hundred, trying an at-home medical treatment involving electrical stimulation of part of the brain. How many medications have you tried? Ten. I'd say ten. I have always been very, very eager to do what it takes to get out of this. So she tried ketamine, most commonly used in anesthesia, forking over $16,000 out of pocket to see whether the new psychedelic treatments now being offered in hundreds of U.S. clinics could provide her with some relief. So that lasted for about, you know, three days, and then it's right back again. Back again to suicidal ideation. Then a few months ago, Micklejohn heard about a new treatment protocol, one she could try at home. It's provided by a team led by Lee Charvet, a neuropsychologist at NYU Langone Health. She's pioneering research in transcranial direct current stimulation, TDCS, as a treatment for a wide range of neurological disorders, depression among them. I have to say of all of our experience with TDCS, the response in the depression trial has been absolutely remarkable resolving depression with half the patients with significant improvements and even more so this is some of the work where we do the animal stimulation at his lab at the city college of new york Maram bixon develops cutting-edge methods of neuromodulation neuromodulation as a field is the use of devices to deliver energy in a controlled way to the nervous system to change the body. When you think something, when you feel something, it's all electricity. We're adding electricity into that mix. So it's sort of maybe not a surprise that an electrical organ is sensitive to electricity coming in. What do you think is most exciting right now in this field generally? One are more and more sophisticated technologies that can deliver energy to the nervous system in a, in a more intentional and targeted way. It's not supposed to hurt, okay? To demonstrate, Bixon suits me up for an experiment to see if targeted electrical stimulation can improve one's concentration while doing a boring, repetitive task. Is there sort of like a sweet spot that you're trying to hit? So this electrode here is roughly over a part of your brain called the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. The dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex is an area of the brain associated with problem solving, attention switching, memory management, and inhibition. Now you're at the full current. Can you feel it? I feel the itchiness. That's for sure. Yeah. Itchiness where the electrode touches my scalp, which went away within a few minutes. No other sensation beyond that. As far as the game, as shown to me in analysis afterward, stimulation appeared to improve my performance a bit. Good performance. Depression treatments target the same brain area as that experiment. We have developed a hypothesis that this energy may not directly affect the neurons of the brain, but actually affect the blood vessels in your brain. Wow. We head over to an MRI machine where they set me up to capture what the stimulation does inside my head. It's going to ramp up. The areas in red show an increase in blood flow, but how that may impact people with depression and other neurological diseases remains a medical mystery. It works, but it also works on the most difficult people, people who have been failed by conventional medicines, but not everyone, but not everyone, no. And, and then there's the opportunity, right? Just like with medications, with neuromodulation, you're thinking, how can I make this work better? How can I capture the people who did not respond? And even for the people who did respond, can I do better for them still? Today, another approach to stimulation called repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, is both FDA approved and widely available, but it requires a series of sessions over days or weeks. 
and larger studies are needed to determine how long improvements last. I'm very interested in creating something that is as effective as that, but you can use it at home. Still under prescription. NYU is using a device developed in partnership with Bixen that can be positioned properly remotely. You haven't done this long enough to know how long it will last? No, we know that more is better. We don't know if you reach a plateau or if you have, have remission and depression. Do you need to continue it? Do you need to taper it? Michael John has been using it daily while meditating for more than three months. When did you start to notice changes? After about three weeks. Has the suicide ideation gone away? Not completely, no. You know, when I dip, I dip. And the difference is, is I bounce back in a day or two. Michael John hopes she'll continue to be a portrait of hope. Now, imagine chance that you had an app on your phone connected to a headpiece and you got a custom, a customized treatment that was going to your brain to treat you individually. The scientists aren't just imagining it, they're actually working on it right now. Chance. Jason, this is really exciting for people, especially those, you know, who think I don't want to be on these pills and this and that. Does insurance cover it? How much does this cost? It varies, and I think most people who are getting this treatment right now are getting it for free because they're in clinical trials. It's still experimental, really, uh, but insurance is paying for certain treatments. Uh, we do know that, and it's becoming easier and easier to get enrolled. And what they're also trying to do is bring down the cost of doing this. By doing it at home, then you could really not have this inconvenience. You could have people doing it on a far more frequent basis rather than having to cart themselves in and be inside a clinic, Chance. Jason Bellini, terrific story. Um, exciting that these people are, are pursuing it, and a lot of people, I think, feel some hope. Thank you.